so his first issue here is what he calls the pessimistic pessimistic induction. Yeah, really so pessimistic. Some, yeah, so sometimes <laughs> this is called the pessimistic meta induction because we're doing a, a, an induction on induction by looking at the history Ooh, of that science. Is meta. That yeah. is meta, yes. <laughs> right. So it says one of the reasons to be skeptical, skeptical is that, as we saw in the last chapter, theories are underdetermined by observation, right. right? The observation doesn't necessarily tell us which theory is the correct theory. Right. It's not like uh, two plus two equals, all right, well, let's let's plug and chug. One, nope. Uh, three, nope. Uh, 2.5, nope. Two, oh, bingo. That's it. That's the only answer it can be. Uh, but here you have, um, well, you know, gr gravity is a particle in a wave. Well, maybe it's not even gravity. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe it's just uh, so something that we've observed that we've labeled it as this. And so here's, uh, you know, uh, um, Gromium. The gromium is, is a, a basic element within the universe, uh, the ether that, that uh, <laughs> attracts things. And so um, it's, it's, it's something that we're not, we're not even aware of, but because of pumping all of our kind of uh, put, putting all our chips on the table for gravity, we're kind of invested in, in that until something comes along and says, oh, well, here's, here's something that's, you know, generating its own gravity that isn't expelling, you know, um, uh, um, heat or uh, it's, it's, it's fully um, uh, adequate in its energy production. Well, then we'd have to rethink of our, our entire understanding of what gravity is. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so under determination, right? He says we saw in the last uh, chapter the theories are underdetermined by observation. After all, different, equally empirical, empirically adequate. That is, right? The theories meet our observations. Yeah. They're empiric empirically adequate. Different empirically adequate. Um, uh, theories can say conflicting things about what goes on behind the scenes. And of course, the big example is Copernic Copernicanism and uh, the um, geocentricity of, uh, of our solar system, right? Both theories match the observable data for decades before Galileo, he says, turned his telescope toward the heavens. And right? realized that and Jupiter had moons circling around it rather than us. Yeah. And we yeah. took offense to it. Yeah, that's right. We're yeah. no longer the center, right? What's <laughs> up with this, right? He says, so So here we have two theories, both Copernicus theory, the heliocentric uh, theory, and the geocentric theory, right, uh, that uh, match the observation. All the, uh, are their data, you know, right. all the data was the same, and they, they both, in fact, he says the tectonic theory also did the same thing, right? Uh, Tycho Bray is uh, known for this tectonic theory. Um, so here's, here's the issue, though. During this time, proponents of each theory had to appeal to virtues other than empirical right. adequacies, virtues like simplicity, conservationists, and such, in order to determine which theory. But there are many more examples of real life underdetermination. In fact, he says the history of science is littered with the remains of successful yeah. but yeah. false theories. Mm -hmm. Right, theories that match the available observations, contributed to tech technological advances, and even made novel and surprising predictions. And yet now we say, "Well, those were wrong." Those they were wrong. Yeah, they were wrong. Yeah, yeah. They, they they weren't ever true. <laughs> they were always wrong. Right, but they were useful. Yeah, they were useful. They, were they worked. They matched the data. They matched our observation. Mm -hmm. Right, they, but they, they, advanced, they were successful. They advanced. They advanced. Technology. That's yeah, right. Sure, but. They're wrong. Yeah. Right? And so, so he gives us, yeah, he gives <laughs> us a list of them. In fact, he gets this list from Larry Loughton, who is a philosopher of science, right? And he gives us a whole list yeah. of them. Uh, Phyllis, Philistine, uh, the caloric theory of heat, uh, vital force theories of physiology, right? The idea that somehow our physiology has some vital force that's causing <laughs> life and that sort of thing, right? Spontaneous generation, you know, that's an old, outdated theory, although... I think it's making a comeback. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. punctured equilibrium. <laughs> right, yeah. the uh, optical ether, the e electromagnetic yeah. ether. You know all those types of things. In fact, he says we could even add Newton's theory. You know, it's it was one of the things I remember being in in uh, physics two class, and after doing you know um, motion and and uh, uh, electromagnetism, you you move on and you do the second one, and we're talking about Newtonian mechanics and. 
uh, the professors up there and just makes a general statement about you know well you know Newtonian mechanics is like it's it, it's helpful but it doesn't you know quite get you there and wait hold on all that we've been studying throughout high school I mean you know once you learn bodies in motion you're there all of high school all of elementary school even and then we just paid hundreds of dollars for you to teach us before and you're saying it's not true and he was like no i mean the class went up in arms we're, we're, we we came upon this realization no one no one warned us about it. newton was wrong i, I thought I, we studied newton even in in uh of modern worldview and philosophy of science you're telling us it's wrong no okay it, it is yeah we, we've replaced newton and uh, and and sadly, Einstein killed him. Although yeah. someone might kill Einstein here. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, he says in some cases, false theories were more successful than uh, true ones. Like this, you know, the the idea that he gives us with regard to the ether theory, which was you know claimed to be the most va validated theory at the time. Yeah. Like everybody believed that the uh, electromagnetic ether was indeed did indeed exist, yeah. right? This In fact, so much so that they believed it over the atomic theory right. of nature. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, uh, he has this quote from him from uh, JC Maxwell to the effect that ether was a better confirmed than any other theoretical entity in natural physiology. Yeah, philosophy, so, rather. Oh, yep, yeah, philosophy. philosophy. That yeah. one, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's you know, what, what is space? Well, space is nothing. Space is just is, is there. Okay, well, the, the what's the difference between, you know, uh, the Earth and the moon? Well, you know, 93,000 miles. Okay, but what's in between there? Well, nothing. Okay, well, what's the, what's the difference between space between my two fingers? Well, nothing. Okay, so... It, it it's got to, there's got to be something there so yeah, this yeah. this this ether theory which I mean came yeah what crystalline spheres yeah yeah I mean, what it was what is moving light through space yeah. right if it's light our, our waves well we know that it has to be some medium right. that's moving right. it right. right so for instance you know on the on Lake Michigan near mm -hmm. where we live right there's waves in the water that are moving uh, through waves so ether positive there must be ether waves mm -hmm. that that cause the, the light to move in right. waves sure. right makes sense and so there, that's what's moving the light yeah. right and everybody thought, oh, yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, like, For yeah. hundreds and <laughs> hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, it's not that they were stupid, but it seems, though, that, again, as the instrumentalists would say, it was useful. Yeah. In fact, he says the great Lord Calvin said in 1884 <laughs> that ether is, quote, the only substance we are confident of in dynamics. Good. There you go. <laughs> the only one. Yeah. Of course, about... 15 years later or so, you know, uh, they discovered they couldn't find it. It didn't yeah. exist, yeah, right? So you can't take an ice cream scoop up Morley there and get, get some ether. Yeah. <laughs>